Good morning and welcome. Paper Radio News Hour. Joe and Jason on this Wednesday. Yeah, happy hump day to you. Uh, the market's all waiting for NVIDIA earnings. Yeah, they, they, that's all they can seem to talk about. I think they're going to be good. I think. I hope. Boy, if they're not, yeesh, look out. But I think they're going to be okay. But we'll wait and see uh, what happens there. So it's going to be kind of a quiet Wednesday, at least quiet in in regards to the stock market. Everybody kind of jockeying for position, pricing for perfection. Uh, we had more closures happening uh, out in the fast food industry one of the big franchises of kfc and pizza huts uh closing down uh, 25 kfc's and then on top of that uh they also had to close gosh a number of pizza huts burger king station we're starting to see these filings pile up a little bit here at a time you know when you think about uh, 47 locations cl- just closing overnight. We're starting to see a-, a little bit more of that where the workers don't even know, right? That- that's kind of the worst kind. You find out uh, either by a text or an email, some of them finding out simply by showing up to work and there's a sign on the door, Pitney Bowes, uh, they're laying off a thousand workers, and then Scale AI laying off over a thousand workers as well. So again, remember the reason for the rate cuts, the re- well, I guess the change in policy that Jay Powell talked about at Jackson Hole was because of worries about the job markets and We've seen these layoffs. I don't know that I see any more than what we were seeing, you know, two weeks ago, a month ago. It's a steady stream of layoffs, Jason. But, you know, I wouldn't say it's, oh, oh my gosh, look, here's this avalanche of job cuts. I haven't seen that yet either. But I think the Fed is determined, right, to once again try to save their banks try to save uh the wall street economy uh in announcing that hey inflation's just not that important anymore yeah and uh you know you, you, what you're talking about what you're saying is not very severe but if you compare it to 2022 it's worse if you compare yeah, it to man, last year right. It's worse. And it's this slow slide. I keep saying, Joey, you know, the, everyone's always looking for this big, huge, monstrous collapse that happens all at once. And it never really happens exactly that way. There's always that one big day. You know, you, you always look at the old footage, right, the old news footage of the big days when things went down. But it, it's usually a process, sometimes months, sometimes even up to a year. And if you look at this slow slight in this direction we've been going, Joe, it's just it's just been happening for months and months and months. And I think it's going to continue to be slow. I think there will be some huge event or some scary news, you know, item that's going to to push this thing faster at some point, Joe. But it's just grinding slowly, slowly to economic uh, chaos, isn't it? I mean, I I see what's going on around here in Colorado, and it's just getting worse and worse. I don't I don't have very many people in. Uh, my wife's f- friend groups that are uh, telling me how great things are getting and how much oh I got the big promotion and I got a raise and 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 oh just economically things are so much better than they were last year I don't I don't hear that from almost anybody Joe. Yeah, that's that's something where I think that's probably uh, the biggest change is, is just that right. It's it's hey, I'm not getting the big promotion. I'm not getting the big raise. Uh, definitely hearing more people worried about our layoffs coming to where I work. So the the employees, the rank and file, are like, okay, things aren't quite as good as they used to be. We'll have to watch it all uh, play out here. Again, we're waiting on NVIDIA earnings. I think that's going to be very uh, – I think I think they're going to be good. I, I really do. I think they're, they're the winner in all of this. But if it's not, it could be an ugly day come tomorrow. Our toll-free number, 800-951-0592. The, the website, all – AmericanGold.com. And when you think about what we've been talking about this week, 
right? We're talking a lot about the treasury market, right? How safe is it? Uh, the announcement from India yesterday that, hey, we are going to de-dollarize and we are going to do it with our BRICS members. Uh, it, it adding to uh, the BRICS payment system, Saudi Arabia, what was it? A month ago or so, changed their payment. They went to the Bank of International Settlements, and now they could, at that point, accept something other than dollars. So up until that point, the Saudis only took dollars for oil. Last week, they announced, hey, guess what? We're going to start taking renembis we're going to start cha- taking uh well with India's currency as well, Russian, you know, they don't really do oil with Russia, but... Once again, the de-dollarization is, is happening at the same time. That's very important for our debt market. And I think that's something a lot of people don't understand that correlation. I think they understand $35 trillion, right? I think people understand that. I think they understand, hey, we can't increase the debt two, three, four trillion dollars every year. But the international side of it is something I think a lot of people don't understand just how important it is that these countries continue to use dollars. We're going to talk about that. We're going to tell you how fast the debt goes up every day and so much more. 800-516-1220. 800-951-0592. Patriot Radio News Hour. Joe and Jason here on this Wednesday. A quick look in here at the markets. The Dow's up 60. The S&P's down 37. The NASDAQ's down 270. The 10-year note at 382. Crude oil pretty flat right now. Just uh, about 75.50. Uh, as Libya has started shutting down the oil fields. We'll see how long this lasts, but as of today, uh, Libya has announced they have started shutting down their oil fields. Remember, that is a dispute between Eastern and Western. You know, ever since we uh, took out Muammar Gaddafi, uh, Libya has been a mess uh, they're unhappy. The east, where the oil is, they're unhappy with the west removing the in, uh, Libyan central bank. Uh, gold right now down fifteen twenty five oh nine. Yes, a gold closed at a new all time high yesterday. Some profit taking this morning. Silver's down fifty six cents twenty nine thirty five. Uh, the dollar is stronger today after uh, the sell-off late yesterday. Uh, and crypto, 58000 there on Bitcoin. Remember, be diversified. Be more diversified. Be smart here. Understand the debt money system. Right? Boom and bust. Boom and bust. Uh, a lot of people are starting to compare this to the 20s, right? Before the Great Depression. I don't know about that. I mean, I wasn't a lot, you know, the roaring 20s. We had a huge increase in the money supply, massive because of COVID. Uh, and then it just never stopped, did it, right? It just never stopped. The spending never stopped. So we've been living uh, high on the hog for a while because of that. That's why we have inflation. That's what really inflation is. Higher prices is just a symptom of all of those things. But when it crashes, that's the hard part. And like Jason said, it doesn't happen all at once you have to have all of these warning signs that that come along and then all of a sudden you you get hit with a a day like like japan had where it falls 12 percent in a day 
And then next thing you know, over the course of 90 days, right, it's down 20, 30, 40%. That's what you want to avoid. How much risk do you want here? That really is the question. That's why we've been telling everybody, check out our friends over at Y Refi. Why? Because you get real strong fixed rates of return up to 10.25%, not correlated to Wall Street. That's kind of the win there, right? Doesn't care about j Powell, doesn't care about NVIDIA earnings, doesn't really care about any of that stuff. You got to have a minimum of $50,000. You can use it as income for right? a lot of people out there. That's what they've been doing, uh, supplementing their Social Security. You can compound it. You can, you can do whatever you want. Here's the great part. You could start compounding it, and then, I don't know, a year later, two years later, hey, I want to start getting some income out of it and say, hey, call them up. Hey, Give me some income coming. You get monthly income. You, you can do whatever you want. They never attack your principal. Uh, and it's really a great thing that they're doing. Check them out. InvestYRefi.com. That's the word invest, the letter Y, R E F Y.com. Or just call them at 888 YREFI24. Now, why have we focused so much on de-dollarization what's happening in the world of course for years we've been telling you be your own central bank that's that's worked out pretty well it's worked out pretty well for people be your own central bank do what they're doing because they're the greatest indicator of how they feel about fiat money go back to the 90s you know i call it the alan greenspan era you know he if you're ranking central bankers you know paul volcker gets a lot of credit for crushing inflation but could you imagine if we have to go back to where that was of course we really can't you can never go back to 10 15 20% interest rates because the debt's too big, right? You could do it back in the 80s. It was only a trillion dollars, right? We could do it. But Alan Greenspan, the guy that came after, no one really understood what he had. I mean, you literally had to have a dictionary when he talked. He's like, what did he just say? I don't even know what these words mean. And then... You just never, you know, he, he, he said a lot and said nothing at the same time. And they lived high on the hog on Social Security. That was a great trick that they played. And guess who they put in charge of Social Security? It was Alan Greenspan before he became head of the Fed. That was his job. He His job was to fix Social Security. So when we got here, we didn't have to worry about there not being any money. Well, guess what? We're here and there's no money. People forget they overcharged you for Social Security starting, what, in 1983. And they overcharged you Every year, from 83 to 93 to 03 to 2013 to about 2018. And now it's going the other way. And then the the, the horrible part was originally that money was supposed to be put in a lockbox. Keep it away from the federal government. Well, see, they couldn't help themselves. And they said, hey guys, let's create this accounting trick where we'll actually have way bigger debts, but we'll fake them out and make it look like the debt is so small. By taking all of the extra Social Security money and spending it and counting it as income. That's why they say there's this trust fund of unmarketable securities. What does unmarketable mean? Well, they actually can't really sell them because they never actually bought 
the security, right? That's what unmarketable, if they actually had bought the Treasury note, right, that would have been one thing, but they didn't. So why is it so important now? Well, let me give you this great example. In the late 90s, Alan Greenspan was talking about we're going to have the debt paid off, right? We were running, we had two years, and I call it a fake budget surpluses because of Social Security, during the Clinton administration. And they said, hey, we're going to pay this whole thing off by 2010, and everything's going to be great because now we won't have to have any interest payments on the debt. Think about it. No interest payments. Right now, that's like $1.1 trillion. By next year, it's going to be $1.6 trillion. The year after that, the interest on the debt's going to be $2 trillion. But hey, who am I? And all of these central banks that had gold were sellers. They said, yes, we've solved, we've cracked the code of fiat money. It's never been done before. But Alan Greenspan did it. He did it, man. Now, it's funny that he did it, and the debt was almost $5 trillion. It was $4 trillion and change. But somehow, he did it. Fast forward to today. Did they pay off the debt? Mm-mm. Nope. Sure didn't. Everybody stopped selling their gold in, like, 2004, 2005, nobody sold, no one sold gold in the last 20 years. They're all buying it now. Why? Because they've lost faith in the fiat money. They're like, uh-oh, it's got to be like all the other fiat money. Look at now. They say the U.S. debt goes up on average. Of $62,607 every second. That's a second. There's another 62000 another 62000 another 62000 another. Right? Think about it. Every second of every day. This is what the national debt is doing. And here's the problem. It gets faster. Right, that that sixty-two thousand next year is going to be sixty-five thousand every second, sixty-eight thousand, seventy thousand, seventy-five thousand. It grows on average over five billion dollars every single day, and that's just doing their funny math. That's 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 funny math. So when we talk about why. De-dollarization is so important. Why is it important that India said, we're going to start trading, we're going to de-dollarize? They just said it. We're going to de-dollarize. Why is that important? Because the United States, part of what the spoils of World War II and Bretton Woods, everybody bought everything in dollars, which meant... All these countries had to hold dollars. Well, how do you hold dollars? These countries don't have bank accounts. They don't leave it in the bank. That's for us stupid people. They hold it in treasuries. That's what they do. That's what they buy. Short-dated treasuries. And then when they need to buy oil, when they need to buy grain or they need to buy, I don't know, missiles and bombs or whatever else. When that treasury matures, they go buy it with dollars. Well, now the world is saying, hey, we'll take something other than dollars. Really, what will you take? What do you got? How about uh, Brazilian reals? Sure. We'll take How about Russian rubles? Yeah. Indian rupees. You bet. Chinese renminbi? Absolutely. Here's the thing. 
that just means they're going to buy less U.S. debt. They'll buy India debt, Chinese debt, Brazilian debt, Russian debt, right? Because they don't want any part of it. Do you think it was an accident? What was it? Late last week? When gold moved up to the second most held asset in the world for central banks past the euro these are important things and when you think about a national debt at 35 close it in on 35 and a half trillion now by the end of the year right we talked about it already we said it at the beginning the debt's going to be 37 trillion dollars by the end of next year, what are we going to be talking about? Forty trillion, right? Who's going to buy it? And now everybody and their mother is talking about how safe is the U.S. Treasury market. We got more next. 800-951-0592. Joe and Jason here on this Wednesday. So you kind of understand why de-dollarization is an important issue. Because we need more and more dollars to be bought. And we've highlighted, remember, Bank of America war. Hey, we're one bad thing away from the markets not operating properly. Then yesterday we talked about the article out just how safe is the global bond markets, in particular the U.S. And the answer, not as safe as they used to be. Then today, Bloomberg Intelligence started talking about something that is probably going to be the cause. The clearing houses at the Treasury mark. So that's going to be your big banks and hedge funds. Okay, these are the clearing houses. They cannot go under. So let me give you an example. A clearing house uh, right now, this is over a trillion dollar market that is short U.S. Treasury. Now, that's, that's a lot. Now, and of course, you're like, God, they're shorting Treasury. That, that, that must be bad. Yes and no. Because on the other side of it, somebody else has to have a long position, so they have a short position. Right? And they, they, they make a little bit of money on the arbitrage between it. Right? That, that's, that's the goal. Here's the thing. These need to be settled every day. And the problem now is starting to emerge. And you guys have heard me talk about it before. Where I'm like, man, treasury markets aren't supposed to move like this. Right? These big, wild swings in the treasury market. I'm like, you know, this is not a meme stock. This is the treasury market. If it moves a tenth, that should be a lot. Now it does a tenth. I'm like, Every other day. It's like it's nothing. Well, guess what? People are starting to pay attention to the clearinghouse market. Particularly because the big banks aren't the only ones there, right? It's the hedge funds. The Bank of International Settlements is warning just how big the problem is getting. The clearing houses, like I said, cannot go belly up. What they do is when the market moves significantly in the wrong direction, They're simply going to put out marching calls on all of these people holding treasuries. Which, of course, will mean what? 
Well, either they got to pay more money, driving up the rates, or they got to liquidate either way. The risk now, according to, to, to Bloomberg, any mispriced risk, which they suggested should take more financial risk in pricing. So what they're saying is, God, we should really do a better job of pricing this risk. Of course, what did I tell you the central bank is trying to do? They don't want price discovery. Why did Jay Powell come out last week and pretty much tell everybody and their mother, we're going to cut rates? Well, because if I don't tell you and you go on the wrong side of this, it's going to be missed price risk. They are now warning that they need to do a better job of pricing this risk, and regulators have so far ignored the advice. So think about this. The clearing houses are telling the Fed, telling the Treasury, guys, we've got a problem here. And it's going to blow up the whole market because risk is being mispriced. And one day the market's going to move so badly that we're going to have to throw margin calls out that we know people can't cover. And so far, according to Bloomberg, Jason, guess what they've decided? Eh, it'll be okay. Don't worry. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll look at it later. Well, if you're massively wealthy... Uh, and sitting in a nice position, it'll always be okay, right, Joe? <laughs> it'll you'll be just fine, right? The the people that they are really uh, preaching to, Bloomberg and, and other news agencies, they can say that very easily. J- Joe, when you're a when you're a, a multimillionaire and you lose a million dollars. You still have the, the other multi-millions to fall back on, right? You know, if, if the markets crash, if things go bad, uh, sh- gosh darn, the trouble, man. Now what are we going to do? i got to get that back, right? But, uh, it's, it's, yeah, not a surprise, Joe. It's, this, is, this is where we're at, right? This is where we're at. This is one of the things that I think is a big reason. Why are central banks, because, you know, you've heard them say, well, gold's expensive now. Central banks are going to slow down. But they're not. Why? Why? I think this is a big reason. This is a huge problem when the clearing houses themselves are saying, hey, guys, the, the market's getting more and more volatile. And. We don't think the risk is priced right. And if it's not and and if it's not priced right, we're gonna have a huge problem. I mean, could you imagine having a day when five, six, seven hedge funds all go under in a single day? Because that's what's gonna happen. And if they go under, how many banks go with them? Right? How many banks would go with them? And the fact of the matter is, the banking industry doesn't want to believe that the risk is mispriced. This is, a, I think, arrogance plays into this, right? Oh, no, it'll be fine, and we can ride to the rescue. I, I don't know, Jason, but I, I think this is another big reason why you're seeing the other central banks going, hey, guess what? The hedge funds call us too, you know. The clearing houses talk to us too. They're sending us the same stuff. Maybe that's why Bank of America, who's part of the clearing house, told everybody yesterday, you better start being your own central bank. I hope that cleared it up. Take the radio news hour. Joe and Jason will be back after the break. 800 Nine five one zero five nine two. Patriot Radio News Hour. Joe and Jason here on this Wednesday. Today's special. It's another good one. I love this one. Ten dollar Indians. 
don't run them very often. We don't get enough of them to do it very often. I've got about 75, just under 73 $10 Indians. Thirteen seventy-five. So that's less than a ten dollar liberty. Remember, we were running ten dollar liberties the other day. Thirteen seventy-five, right? Today I've got ten dollar Indians at thirteen seventy-five. That's a savings of sixty-five bucks. You just don't. Every once in a while, the five dollar liberties you can get cheaper than a five dollar or a five dollar Indian cheaper than a five dollar liberty. Almost never on the ten dollar Indian. Ten dollar Indian that is the Lady Liberty with her Indian headdress on, uh, and they kid didn't make very many of them. Uh, people thought they carried the plague. Blah 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 blah. But what an opportunity today! Ten dollar Indians. Less than ten dollar liberties, thirteen seventy five at eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. And you know, people just love the Indians. I, I think they're the best coins that the our government's ever made. Losses picking up a little bit here on Wall Street. Uh, the Dow's down a hundred, the SB down thirty five. Uh, The NASDAQ down a little over 200 points as they're waiting on NVIDIA. Uh, Gold right now, 2,510. You know, gold was down yesterday and then rallied all the way and then closed at a record high. I don't know, uh, obviously, what it'll do today, but squarely above 2,500. Every day above 2,500 is just another building block to the next level. But, Jason... I remember the last time Bank of America warned about the Treasury market. I don't know if you remember, but it was the during quantitative tightening the last time. And Bank of America sent a letter to the Fed and said, Hey guys, hello, what are you doing? We're going to have a big treasury problem. And then all of a sudden, I don't know if you're, people forget. Remember, there was emergency meetings. Uh, the, the Fed had to immediately stop quantitative easing. Then it had to go, our quantitative kind of had to go back to zero. And then quantitative easing started and, and like every day. Oh, well, it's a $5 billion problem. Well, uh, 24 hours, okay, it's a $20 billion problem. 42 hours, 48 hours, like, okay, it's a $100 billion problem. And it just grew and grew and grew. And then, of course, all of a sudden, here came COVID, and people forgot. Well, guess yep. what? Bank of America's warning again. Bloomberg's warning again. We're seeing, look at India. I'm still shocked that it just put it right out there, right in their statement. We are de-dollarizing. That is something you don't see, Jason. But again, I think it all stems from this treasury market. And they're just like, you know what? We just don't want to hold that much U.S. debt because, hey, as soon as a shock comes, there's going to be massive amounts of hedge funds and banks that will go under because they can't make the margin calls. And then what will America do, right, Joe? What will America do? I mean, there's been some some examples of certain individuals de-dollarizing in public. Uh, Saddam Hussein. Uh, well, we're going to do euros. Yeah, we're doing. I'm going to do euros. We're uh, we have no interest in dollars anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and then 9-11 and the Gulf War happens, <laughs> right? right? So right. Uh, what, what is America going to do? Are, are they going to attack India if, they, if they, they run from the dollar? And that's kind of precisely what we're talking about. Some major event's going to happen. Is it going to be a, a, a widespread war? Because uh, the only way to get people back into dollars, if they're really, really wanting to flee, Joe, I guess is to scare them back into it, right? Scare them back into it. Why is Warren Puck? Did you see Warren Buffett? Sold another billion share or billion dollars of Bank of America. Do you think you think Warren Buffett doesn't know? Warren Buffett is like, wait a minute, Bank of America. They're the ones that seem to be calling the uh, hey, but hey guys, hey, uh, 
Oh, if you want to know, but there, there's a fire over here. It's it, it's a it's a it's a little fire right now. Maybe we should put it out. What do you guys think? Nah, nah. We'll just let it burn. Hopefully, it'll burn itself out. I'm wondering, right? That's the other thing, right? Warren Buffett just announced again today. He can't sell Bank of America shares fast enough. And it's not because I think Bank of America is a bad bank. I think because Bank of America is letting everybody know. Right? The shock is coming. They don't know when to hear yeah. the thing. They don't know what day it's going to be. Just like we don't know what day it's going to be. But it's coming. I just saw a long... Uh... Uh, we're looking at the history of the housing crash uh, with Bank of America and their misdeeds with Merrill Lynch. I don't know if you remember any of this stuff about how really, truly corrupt Bank of America was in their misdealings with Merrill Lynch and, and their little merger. And, and a lot. Of, and here's the funny thing is a lot of all of that sprung BlackRock for, forth as this mega giant that it became since then. It's so interesting how all these things uh, financially are so connected, Joe. And it's funny because if you're a, if you're a financial titan, you just jump off one sinking ship and jump onto the one that's floating better, right? And uh, that's what Warren Buffett's doing. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. The Indian Super Sale, ten dollar Indian. Below ten dollar liberties at thirteen seventy five. Say sixty five dollars a coin. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Final statement coming up. Coming up. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. The Indians, right? That was the fractional gold that went with the Saint Gaudens. So pre-1933, $10 Indians, private gold. You can buy, sell, trade. Don't have to worry about 1099s and all of that stuff. A super, super sale today. $65 off, thirteen seventy-five on $10 Indians at 800 Nine five one zero five nine two December gold. We got to really pay attention to that. It's only down eight bucks now. Uh, Twenty five forty five uh, spot gold right now down about fourteen dollars twenty five ten this morning. Uh, by the way, silver twenty nine thirty six right now as they're all waiting for Nvidia earnings to come out. But the big news this week, we first had Bank of America, which weeks ago had already warned about a shock to the treasury markets, telling everybody, hey, you better be your own central bank. Right? I, I'm, somebody from Bank of America probably listens to this show. I wouldn't doubt it. Be your own central bank. If you don't hold it, you don't own it. Period. Your money market accounts, your bank accounts, your stock accounts, they're not safe. Then you have India. Just say, guess what? We're speeding this up. We're going to de-dollarize right now. And then on top of that, on top of that, Bloomberg Intelligence comes out and says, hey, the big problem in the Treasury market is going to be the clearing houses. They're going to be forced to make margin calls. And the, the, the answer really is simple. They're like, hey, listen, the other party, they can't handle the margin. They, they won't be able to make the margin calls. And it's going to send shock waves through it. You're going to have clearinghouse hedge funds potentially going bust, which then puts the big banks that are in the clearinghouse to go bust. I mean, Bank of America has been warning about it. It's funny that it takes a while for us to get all the data and, and, and get this news to, to come out. I got to believe Warren Buffett has been aware of this, and this is why he's been dumping bank stocks the way he's been dumping them. 
I, I, I really do. I think this is why. There's a lot of reasons to be dumping bank stocks, Joe, and 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 uh, it it he's he's been through the he's been he's seen this rodeo, right? He's been in oh, he's yeah. been in this rodeo a couple of times, right? And uh, if he can if he can uh, short and get rid of bank stocks, and then banks come back, I'm sure he'll buy it before it goes back up, right, Joe? He'll he'll know. And uh, this is why we have you buy gold and silver. I just can't, can't keep saying it. Gold is gold has been strong when the dollar has been strong in the last few years. Gold has been strong when the dollar is weak. And now they're going to lower rates. And and Joe, gold is just powering through stuff. And all the, all those people out there waiting for the gold gold to have a, a, a pullback. Yeah, I, I guess sometime. I don't know when. Next year, three years from now. There, there's always going to be some 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 sell offs. But a meaningful sell-off, Joe, multiple hundreds of dollars sell-off, I don't know if that's 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 in the plan for the next months or years, Joe. It's, it sure looks like gold just wants to slowly but surely climb the ladder. 800-951-0592, Patriot Radio News Hour, Joe and Jason wrapping it up. Man, if there was a shock like this, if this actually comes to fruition, could we see a two or three, four hundred dollar gold date? We, we probably could. Let's hope it doesn't happen.